Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. And in this series, we're gonna be building a Minecraft server using Docker. So quick preface, I'm not a Minecraft expert. So treat this as a beginner's guide. And really, I'm just creating this as a journal note for myself to remember what I did. So in this video, we'll start with a vanilla Minecraft server. And in later videos, we'll use other server types. We'll add plugins, we'll add configurations, and then finally, we'll put it online so that everyone can connect to it and play on the server. So in the setup, I'm running a server with Ubuntu 22.04 installed on it. It's actually sitting over my shoulder right now. And in our videos, we will be remotely connecting to it, and we'll be installing Docker, we'll add volumes for data persistence, and then we will look at our saved data after we save our world. If you're not familiar with Docker, it's a platform for developing, shipping, and running applications in containers, which is in isolation with everything else. So the good thing about Docker in our scenario is that we don't need to install Java, we don't need to install any other software other than Docker for this to run. So if you're interested in other basic Docker commands, I have a video linked in the description below. All right, let's get started. So we're currently on our Minecraft client. And before we connect to our server, we have to create it. So I'm going to remote over to my server. And the first thing we'll do is let's do an update on our app get. So, well, we have to type in our password correctly. And I have posted some instructions on installing Docker on Ubuntu. So we're going to follow all of those instructions. The first thing we're going to do is update all of our new package installations. Next thing is we will install CA certificates and curl packages, which will allow the system to verify the SSL certificates, adding our key rings. We're going to also download the Docker GPG key and save it to a folder. And these are just to verify that the packages that we download are legitimate. And so we're going to install the Docker CE, the Docker CLI, as well as our Docker build plugin and our Docker compose plugin. So we're going to need these in order to run our Docker application. And so we're just going to wait for it to install. All right, so once everything is installed, we are going to do a Docker version just to make sure that everything is here. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add our user to a group called Docker. So I've already created a group called Docker, so it already exists, but you should still do the add group. We're going to then put our user into the Docker group. And basically why we're doing this is that we don't need to do sudo every time we run a Docker command. So I'm going to go into this new group, Docker. I'm going to log into this group called Docker. And we're going to run a hello world program just to make sure that this command is working. All right, so how Docker works is that if it doesn't find an image locally, it will pull from the repository. So you can see that this is what it's doing here. We'll do a quick clear. And just for cleanup, we will remove the processes that we're running. So notice that here we have a hello world process called trusting hawking, which I'm just going to remove. So we'll do docker remove trusting hawking. And just to further do the cleanup, we will delete the image for hello world as well. All right, so now if we take a look at our images, docker images, it'll show that we have nothing. Okay, great. So now we are ready to do a poll for our Docker image for the Minecraft server. So the Minecraft server image is from itzg slash Minecraft dash server. So I'm going to pull this image into the computer. And this is not a necessary step because if you saw before, when we do the Docker run, it will automatically pull the image if it's not already local to my computer. But I just wanted to kind of show you what's happening. So this is just one typical Minecraft server. So this actually has uh, pretty good ratings online. So that's why I'm using this. But there are other images out there for Minecraft servers. All right, so once everything is pulled, we'll do a Docker images and we'll take a look at 
the image will cre uh, we'll create a di uh, directory called MC data. So this is where all of the data is going to be sitting. So we'll do a Docker run interactive terminal, uh, the ports 25565 to, to 25565. So this is the default port for Minecraft servers, and we're going to make a volume mapping the MC underscore data folder that we just created into a folder called data, which is by default where all of the world data, all of the player data is going to be saved in the Minecraft server. We're also going to make the user end user license agreement to be equal to true. Uh, so we're going to accept the license agreement. We're going to name this server MC underscore server just for readability. And this is not necessary, but we are also going to run this image itzg slash minecraft dash server. So as we run this, this is going to create a container. So notice that it defaults to vanilla version of Minecraft server. And we are going to download the latest version of the server, which at the time of this recording is 1.21.1. .1. And it runs a bunch of jar files, which, at, which it downloads. And I want you to note a few things as this server starts. First of all, it says no existing world data. So it's going to create a new world. So this is actually going to take a little bit longer because we don't have anything for it to load. So it's just going to have a random seed create a world and it's going to calculate some spawn area as well. And we are going to be able to go into our world very soon once everything is started up. So once it's done, we will disconnect from our container. And let's take a look at the processes that are currently running. And we'll see that this Minecraft server, this MC underscore server, is currently running. So let's take a look at all of the ports or all of the processes that are listening to the port 25565. And so everything is running properly. We'll take a look at our host name. And our host name is our local area network address. So we'll just copy this for now. And we will attach ourselves back into the container. And this will allow us to be able to see all, all this feedback and all that's happening on the server. All right, so let's jump over to our client. We'll go to multiplayer and we'll add a server and we'll call this my Minecraft server. And we'll paste in our server address. Okay, so let's join the server. And you see that the feedback on the Docker container is that I've entered. And I have enlisted the help of my friend here who is a Minecraft expert. We'll do a little bit of PvP here. And my username is momongi777. And my friend's name is It's Bestie. So when I kill him, you'll see the feedback that's in the server. Or actually, he killed me. So you see the feedback is on the server. And so a lot of the what's happening in the game is going to appear on the feedback for the server. So other things that we can do here is type some console commands. So one thing that we can do is make both of us operators. So I'm going to do a slash op and my username. And this is going to give me operator access. So you can see kind of the feedback in the game. It's kind of blurry in the background there. But I'm going to give my friend also op access. And so we can start building out a world. All right, so let's go back to the game. And so we can now have we can now have operator access. So I'm going to change my game mode to creative. So let's build some stuff here. In fact, let's just build a house. We'll uh, make a let's make a oak house. And my buddy has already started building. All right, so let's help him out a little bit. We'll just build a very simple house so that we can take a look at it once we save the world and come back in later. So you can actually build 
some more very elaborate stuff and save it into our world data. All right, so let's log out and try to save all this data here. All right, let me pick a good spawn point. Okay, so we'll set this as our spawn point. I'll disconnect. And in order to save all of our data, we'll go back to our server. We'll do the slash save all, which is going to save all of our world data into that folder that we just created. So if we jump out of the container and we go into our MC underscore data folder, you'll see that this is where all of our data has been saved. So you'll notice that there's the jar file that's been downloaded. In fact, one of these things is the world data. And I want to take a look at that. And you see this is in the world data is where all of our player data is located. All of our world data is located as well. So this is what gets loaded when we start up our Minecraft server. All right, so let's attach back into our container. And I'm going to stop this Minecraft server. And as we stop the Minecraft server, you'll see that all of the things get saved. And let's start this up again. Oh, we forgot to remove this container. So let's remove our Minecraft server. OK, so let's start it up again. All right, so now, again, we are loading the default, which is vanilla Minecraft. Uh, you'll see that as this thing starts loading, notice it says preparing world level world. So remember before, we didn't have a level world. And also, we didn't have a spawn point. So I need to calculate the spawn point as well. So here we have both of these. And when we go back into our world, you'll see that this has already been created for us. And we can continue our building, or we can do other stuff with it. OK, so that's pretty much all we have for this video. Hello there, spider in the background. And so in our next video, we'll take a look at other ways that we can configure our Minecraft server. And we'll take a look at other types as well. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.